Hello there, my zealots. This is Joshua coming at you today. Um, so it all started with a meme. Um, I'm on Facebook. Uh, I have my, I think I told you, my my best friend, he committed suicide. But my best friend had two best friends. One actually was a guy named Josh Quesada and then myself, which is Joshua. So it was kind of ironic that he had two best friends named Joshua. Anyway, he was actually closer to Josh Quesada than he was to me, but he was closer to me than I was to Josh Quesada. Actually, Josh Quesada and I didn't really hang out much. Um, I made a point. I, I promised him that I would go visit him more, and he uh, he's having some cancer. And, like, seriously, he's going through some hard times, but I am I'm unable to remove myself from my location because I work full time and I have no vehicle. So it's like, um, I have very little, very few options to get up to where he's at. And I, and I feel, I, I regret that. But anyway, this is all circumstance. This is, has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. The issue is, is that Josh Quesada posts this meme on Facebook and it's basically about Jesus um, he's basically saying that Jesus is, hold on, let me, let me get it up here. So he's saying that, ha, this is kind of funny. So the meme says it, it, it's right here. This is the meme. And I, I never told you to hate anybody. This is, it's supposed to be Jesus. Jesus is on the thing. He says, I never told you to hate anybody. I don't care where they're from or what they look like or who they're in love with or what, or who they worship. Why is this so difficult? And I'm like, you know, that's not actually true. Um, and so I posted that Jesus did tell us to hate. And in Luke 14, 26, And if any man come unto me and hate not his father, mother, wife, children, or brethren, or sisters, yea, his own life, he cannot be to my disciple. The thing is, is that we are supposed to hate. The problem is, is that in our culture, there are two different... Hate is evil in our culture and love is good in our culture okay hate is evil love is good that's not true at all you can hate things and be righteous and you can love things and be evil it's 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 very easy to do specifically in scripture in fact the first sin was because this first sin could have been avoided by Adam, <clears throat> had he not, had he not, the first sin could have been avoided by Adam if he had hated his wife. And what do I mean by this? Had he hated his wife? If he had hated, righteously hated his wife, we could have avoided the first sin. Because Lucifer deceived Eve and Adam was not deceived. So when Adam, when Eve was deceived, Adam became very upset and that his wife was going to be killed because she had sinned. And now he's stuck with a choice. I can either lose my wife and have God, or I can lose God and have my wife. And guess what he chose? He chose his wife. And because of that, he had a evil love of his wife and he had a or no, sorry. He had an evil love of his wife, and he had a or, evil love of his wife, and he had a he and he hated God. There you go. Let me put it that way. He hated God from a perspective of the Bible. There's a biblical perspective. You are not, anytime you love something more than God, that is an evil love. And anytime that you have a righteous hatred, it's when you you love something less than God. Um, and it's, it's, and some people would say this is a bad translation. It's not actually, it's, it's actually the better translation because it emphasizes, it puts the emphasis in the right place. It is supposed to be an, an, a, an, an, uh, an obsession. It's supposed to be like an intense, a zealousness about it. I hate anything that divides me from or separates me from God. Another example. Okay. A Abraham had his son and to god told him to sacrifice him he's like listen you need to sacrifice him he's like but you gave him to me he's the promised kid blah 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 and he's like yeah i know but i still need you to sacrifice him and he's like okay and 
In doing this, Abraham proved that he had a righteous hatred of his son, and he had uh, and 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 he had a righteous love of God. I mean, this is this is the righteous hatred and the righteous love. And Adam had a evil love and a evil hatred. Okay, so this is this is how it delineates. Now, how does that apply to our modern day? Well, Jesus Christ said that. I have not bring, come to bring peace, but to divide. Your enemies shall be of your own household. Two should be against the three, and three should be against the two. This will happen. This, this is not a happenstance. This is not a maybe. This is not, it's a prophecy. If you're righteous, your household will hate you. And if your household hates you, then you are righteous. And if you do not hate your household, then you cannot be righteous. You must hate your household in order to be righteous. Does that mean, but and this is the thing, you have to maintain that there is a righteous hatred and a evil love. And if I don't have a righteous hatred, then I will have an evil love. You need to have a righteous hatred of everything and then you can have a evil, uh, so that way you avoid the evil love. This is, it's, it's hard for our Western mindset to grasp this Eastern concept. But anything that we love more than God is in. So anyway, I hope this blesses you. Just, I, there are people and there are things, there are situations that you are going to be put up against where the devil will say, if you don't do what I tell you to do, you will lose this. And every single time we have to hate that thing and say goodbye. We have to hate on a moment to moment basis. We have to love on a moment to moment basis. When somebody is trying to separate us from God, we are supposed to hate them in that moment. And when somebody is trying to, is, is helping us in our path to God, we're supposed to love them. This is why the Good Samaritan is a parable. It's like you're supposed to love your neighbor. Well, who is your neighbor? The neighbor that you are to love is the neighbor that is doing the will of God. And if a neighbor is not doing the will of God, then you are supposed to hate them. It's, 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 a, it's an alien concept, I know, but it is a biblical concept that we all, all Christians need to grasp. And this is not just in reference to people. But it is also in reference to things and ideas and, and, and all things. Anything that gets in the way of our constant prayer to God and our, our constant dwelling on godly and righteous things, those things need to be sacrificed. Anyway, I think this is good. All right, so I'm Joshua. Uh, you know that I love God because I love virtue, justice, and salvation. Um, click share, subscribe, subscribe, click the dingy thingy, uh, leave me comments. Um, yeah, feel free to bring it on Saturday, 10 o'clock Pacific standard time. We have the live stream, be there be, or be square, bring your questions, ask as many questions as you want. I love them. I love your questions. They, they, they really energize me. And if it's a really good question, I'll just post it on here. It, it'll be awesome. So anyway, please come on down. Um, you have a great day. Um, yeah, but make sure you hate each other. No, just kidding. Uh, love each other as Christ loved the church. And then, but if they try to separate you from God, then hate them and let them go. You have a nice day. Take it easy. Bye.